Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is June the 5th, 2019. I believe Anthony Joshua, who I consider to be one of the world's best heavyweights, right? A man who, quite frankly, today, I would take were he to fight Deontay Wilder. Right? I believe Anthony Joshua is about to make one of the biggest mistakes of his professional career. Right? I don't believe he should fight Andy Ruiz next. As I said in my post fight video here online, right, I think he should take time off, not exercise the immediate rematch clause develop new skills try to figure out what went wrong understand at 29 he has a lot of time left in the sport right heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else in boxing just look at the ages of some of the recent heavyweight champs Vitaly Klitschko Vladimir Klitschko right just look at the ages of some of the world-class contenders right now Luis Ortiz with Anthony Joshua's punching power, and power is the last to go, he could have a very long, very successful heavyweight career. Right? He needs to view this Andy Ruiz loss as a bump in the road, a much longer road, where five years from now we might look back, we'll always remember the match, right? first fight he lost in his professional career but in five years time I believe Joshua could easily regain the heavyweight championship have other memorable fights that might reflect better on his capabilities but understand there are a lot of reasons why he shouldn't fight Andy Ruiz again right styles make fights as I said in the pre-fight video, I thought Andy Ruiz's style would give him more problems than, let's say, Deontay Wilder's style. Guy with fast hands, who's in your face, who's two-handed, who's collapsing the pocket, right, who's a combination puncher. All of those things didn't bode well for a big clunky heavyweight who had never faced that level of hand speed before and whose defense was a concern of some of the insiders who saw him. Understand, Floyd Mayweather told Joshua that he needed to work on his defense, invited Joshua to fight at the Mayweather gym in Las Vegas. In other words, Floyd Mayweather, a defensive master, saw Anthony Joshua as Joshua was in the middle of an unbeaten streak that took him to the heavyweight title, right? And Mayweather wasn't convinced that Joshua was a finished product. Let's face it, we're all works in progress. But when you see a guy in the upper echelon of the sport fighting a former heavyweight champ, uh, fighting a current heavyweight champ, you realize that that guy needs to improve in some areas to be able to compete. And the storm clouds were out, weren't they? Right? That's Joshua on the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko. Understand? Tyson Fury went 12 rounds with Klitschko. He wasn't on the canvas. And that was a younger Klitschko. Well, now we have one of my heroes in life. This is a guy I followed a long time. He's one of the best ambassadors for the sport of boxing and he has traveled many of the roads that Joshua has traveled. George Foreman. Like Joshua, George Foreman was an Olympic gold medalist. Like Joshua, George Foreman was a huge puncher who started his career with an unbeaten streak that took him to the heavyweight title. 
right? Let me point out that when it comes to boxing and guys who have had great mentors around them, George Foreman is very hard to beat because understand he used to train with former heavyweight champion Sonny Liston. Right? Foreman took tips and learned defense from former light heavyweight champion Archie Moore. Right? So when it comes to boxing, of course, Foreman's a guy who has been there and done that. Right? Fought in some of the biggest fights. He fights Fraser in Jamaica. He fights Ali in Zaire. Right? Foreman also walks away from the sport returns to the sport, goes on to win the heavyweight title. Right During his comeback, he fought people like Jerry Cooney. He wins the heavyweight championship again by KO over Michael Moore. Let me say this too. Foreman is even more interesting like that than that because if you were alive in the 70s, you remember the crowd turning on Foreman. And you remember Foreman fighting a fight against one of my favorite fighters, Jimmy Young. And of course, Foreman did not get the decision in that fight. Right? As Wilt Chamberlain famously said, no one roots for Goliath. Right? Foreman had been to the top of the mountain, had lost his title, and then afterward, he was dealing with a bit of a public backlash. Right? He wasn't the warm and cuddly fan favorite toward the end of the 1970s. Understand too, Foreman is one of the most successful businessmen right? to come out of boxing. Foreman made millions of dollars. In fact, Andy Ruiz might want to talk to Foreman Foreman made millions of dollars selling the George Foreman grill and things like that. Right? Understand too, Foreman, in addition to being an Olympic gold medalist, a heavyweight champion, he even went Hollywood at one point. If you saw the movie Uptown Saturday Night, right, with Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby, understand George Foreman's in that movie too. Now, Foreman doesn't get the airtime that Poitier and Cosby got, right? But Foreman, Foreman was in a big Hollywood movie, right? We'll let my phone just ring in the background here. So understand, Foreman could offer a lot of advice, and I mean a lot of advice, to Anthony Joshua. Well, TMZ, TMZ did an outstanding interview of George Foreman. I want to give props to TMZ for the interview. And they asked Foreman about his thoughts on Anthony Joshua following Joshua's loss. Here's what Foreman had to say. The two-time world heavyweight champion feels it would behoove Joshua to avoid a rematch despite the possible desire to prove that the loss to Ruiz was a fluke. Here's Foreman's quote. If I'm Anthony Joshua's manager, I say, let sleeping dogs lie. I don't want to fight that guy anymore because you don't know what you did wrong. You go back and you're going to do the same thing. Let it slide. Leave Ruiz alone. Let him alone. Right? Let me go one step further. Another guy who has traveled similar roads, former Olympic gold medalist, former heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis, came out after the fight and said, you know, I think Joshua needs to consider replacing his trainer. Lewis went further and talked about his first loss and how he then brought in Manny Stewart, right? Lewis said, look, you can't go to college with a third grade teacher. Now, McCracken, for anyone who knows him, 
Joshua's trainer, has done some great work in the past. Right? I'm not here to say McCracken's a third grade teacher. But what I am here to say is sometimes you need a fresh set of eyes. Right? Sometimes you have holes in your game and need that new voice to point it out to you. I get the feeling Joshua knows he has holes in his game. Right? And sometimes a new voice can say, hey, here's how I could cure it. And there isn't the embarrassment that would come from, let's say, a long-time teacher-student relationship. Right? Fresh slate, new trainer, could do him wonders. Well, getting back to Foreman. Foreman believes... And I believe this too, that Joshua needs to take some time off from the sport. Understand inherent in what Lennox Lewis is saying, getting a new trainer, is the idea that he takes time off from the sport. What good would it do me to get Angelo Dundee or Ray Arcel, right, or Emmanuel Stewart, if I don't have the time to actually sit down and make the adjustments that they are suggesting. I can't hire Angelo Dundee and then say, hey, you're hired for this one fight. It doesn't work that way. Dominique Brazil, before his fight with Deontay Wilder, hired Virgil Hunter. Now, if you know anything about Virgil Hunter, it's that Virgil Hunter is a defensive wizard, right? He's a guy who teaches different styles. The last thing Virgil Hunter would want you to do against Deontay Wilder is to stand there and then try to counter a Wilder right hand, which is what Dominique Brazil did right before he gets knocked out by that right hand. Right? Virgil Hunter in interviews before that Brazil Wilder fight said, you know, when I'm brought in late, you know, really, my focus is on just helping the fighter with one thing. Right? Because trainers need time. Trainers need time to get you out of your bad habits. A boxing match happens quickly, especially when you're in against a guy with quick hands. I would say the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. In Andy Ruiz, you don't have a lot of time to think about what to do. You certainly don't have time to have a conversation with your quarter, with your corner during the round. So Foreman believes that Joshua, again, he's only 29 should take a year off. Right during that year, he can assemble a new team. Maybe he wants to reach out to these grandmaster elder guys, right? Call up Floyd. Say, Floyd, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Call up George Foreman. Say, hey, George, why do you think I need time off? And what would you do differently? Let me point out, that a big part of Foreman's game, right, he had a great jab, heavy puncher, big part of Foreman's game, just look at the films, is Foreman's defense, right? Had Foreman, who fought some fast-handed guys, right, Jimmy Young, Ali, had Foreman been in against Andy Ruiz, and Andy started flashing that type of two-handed hand speed, I guarantee you Foreman would have had his hands up like this. Let this guy hit my body. He's not going to be hitting me on the temple or the chin. Right? I guarantee you, too, that if Foreman, who big heavyweight, like Joshua, not quite as tall as Joshua, but big, right? Foreman's nickname back in the day was Big George Foreman, right? Big guy. Had Foreman been in the ring 
with a shorter Andy Ruiz, Foreman would have tried to lean on him. Right? Foreman would understand that a big man, a taller man, can do some things that a shorter man can't do. Well, all I'm saying is, as I said in an earlier video, four or five months from now, Andy Ruiz is still going to have the hand speed advantage. Andy Ruiz is still going to be on his front foot. He's still going to be a combination puncher. Joshua is not going to develop a Mayweather type defense. Mayweather's Philly shell, right? Understand, they're different types of defense. Joshua is not going to develop some defensive construct that's going to allow him to deal with Andy Ruiz's volume in the pocket. Nor in four or five months is Joshua suddenly going to develop a back foot game. He's not going to be up on his toes. He's not going to be shooting a jab and moving. The funniest part of the fight to me was when his corner tells him, hey, you know, stick and move, basically. I thought, wow. You know, I've watched a few Joshua fights. <laughs> When has Joshua stuck and moved? How is Joshua going to keep Ruiz at the end of a jab? Maybe in a year. With, you know, a lot of study and a lot of instruction. But not now. Right? Joshua should talk to Lennox Lewis. Ask Lennox Lewis why he feels he needs a new trainer. Right? Talk to Lennox about the types of trainers. Keep in mind, Lennox Lewis is currently a boxing commentator. Lewis spends his time watching fights. He knows the players. He knows the current trainers. Right? Jonathan Banks the new trainer for Golovkin is a disciple of Lewis's trainer Emmanuel Stewart right I have no doubt that Lennox Lewis knows Jonathan Banks right if I'm Joshua and let's remember for all the people around you the fighter is king right you're the talent to quote Deontay Wilder the people around you should be working for you, not the reverse. Right? If I'm Joshua, I take this moment to reflect on my career, to reassess. He's not the first big time fighter to lose. Right? Foreman lost. Lennox Lewis lost. Right? By the way, both fighters, after the loss, went on and had several years of success. Lewis does fight Oliver McCall again, but not right away. Right? Lewis has fights between his first fight with McCall and the rematch. Let's get real here, too. The kind of loss that Joshua suffered to Ruiz is structural. It's not the one-punch variety. An argument can be made that Lewis loses to Oliver McCall. Lewis later loses to Haseem Rockman, right? Both of the losses are of the one-punch variety. Right? Any fighter can get hit with that bad punch at any time. You get hit by a fluke punch. If it's a one-punch KO, okay, you can say, all right, well, I just need to be more careful. Let me, you know, get back in the ring without retooling my existence. The Ruiz fight isn't a one-punch KO. Ruiz hits the canvas four times, 
Not once. He's methodically beaten. What I want people to do is to relook at the film. Right, the first knockdown stems from a great left hook to the temple that Andy Ruiz throws. Right? I thought after that, Ruiz's best punch was his right hand, which he lands with stunning regularity against a taller fighter, Joshua, who's leaning forward. Right? It'll take a lot of work for Joshua to change his center of gravity so he can lean backwards and avoid that shot. Understand, Joshua's defense completely falls apart once the bullets start flying. No one knows that better than Andy Ruiz, who was in the ring firing the bullets. So Andy, in a rematch is going to be up-tempo. Let me say, even though that rematch is in the United Kingdom, understand, if you're the visiting opponent, the crowd and the judges don't matter that much if you're going to win the fight by KO. That's what Andy Ruiz would try for. Understand, Andy Ruiz has a lot of power. This isn't the first fight where Andy got a stoppage. I keep telling people, look at the Joe Hanks fight. Folks, he drops Demetrenko. Then Demetrenko basically says, I'm out of here. That's the fight he had right before this Joshua fight. Right? Andy just knocked down Joshua in two different rounds. If a rematch takes place, Andy wouldn't be in the United Kingdom trying to get a decision. He'd be over there trying to get another stoppage. He would try to make the first round of the rematch really the eighth round of this fight. Let's say Joshua is in there and thinks he just had a bad night. right? And how could he, given the number of hard shots he got hit with? But let's say Joshua's in there and has deluded himself. Right? You can imagine by the end of the second round, once he sees the hand speed, once he realizes that the fight's being fought at a faster pace than the first fight, because the first fight had feeling out rounds. Now Ruiz knows Joshua. Now Ruiz knows he can hurt Joshua. Right, going into the first fight, Ruiz might have thought to himself, well, I really don't know about Joshua's chin. Now he knows about Joshua's chin. So I understand. Some contracts would have to be amended. Some feelings would have to be hurt. Some of the best made plans would have to change. I know sometimes taking time off to reevaluate to get a new corner that you can actually work with. In other words, this isn't the hire of a trainer on Tuesday. I'm having a fight on Friday. I'll learn everything from Angelo Dundee this week. No, no, that's not the way it works. Right? Foreman has offered to be Joshua's manager. Understand what that means. Foreman feels he needs a new manager. Lennox Lewis feels he needs a new trainer. Floyd feels he needs to work on his defense. What you're not hearing from these guys is that Joshua has everything in place and is doing everything the right way. Right? These men have no axe to grind. Understand, none of them are competing with Joshua for anything. These guys are already, you know, among the elites in the sport of boxing. Right? And so, as I said earlier too, Joshua needs to think about Shane Mosley. Mosley fought Vernon Forrest, lost to him. Mosley exercised his immediate rematch clause. 
Guess what? That second fight, Vernon Forrest still had a great jab. That second fight, Vernon Forrest was still taller than Shane Mosley. Still knew how to not get hit by Shane Mosley. The same problems that Mosley had in the first fight, Mosley had in the second fight. Now here it's even more severe. Here Joshua got dropped four times in the first fight. <laughs> I mean, dropped four times. His defense non-existent when Andy Ruiz crashes the pocket. You look at the film and you say, well, what does Joshua have to work on? You see Ruiz landing left hands. And you say, oh, okay, Joshua needs to find a way to stop Ruiz's left hand. Then you see Ruiz landing right hands. <laughs> That's when you realize, oh, man, Joshua has some things to do. Then you notice, against a shorter guy who's coming forward, right, Joshua can't lean back. Right, just Joshua's reactions to getting off the canvas is going to require some time, right? You can't have a guy who gets off the canvas, shows the ref his gloves, then the ref says, walk to me, and the guy is casual and stuff like that, right? Later, the last knockdown, right? Joshua's leading in the corner. Rather than, you know, showing the gloves and leaning forward, he's leaned back with his hands up. Right? Let's just say Joshua right now is somewhat clueless about body language and stuff like that after being knocked down. Let's just say he gets hit in the body several times by Andy Ruiz who's jabbing to the body. Right? Joshua's just standing around. Right? Contrast that with the Lennox Lewis, Razor Ruddick fight, how that fight ends. Right? Ruddick goes to Lewis's body. Lewis comes up top. Why? Because when you go to the body, your hand's down here. Look what's unprotected. Right? Let's just say, watching the film, you realize that Joshua is a young guy who hasn't quite fought 25 times. Right? I heard his sparring partners are guys out of the amateurs and stuff like that. I heard he's sparring at a public gym someplace, right? Um, I'm curious, well forget me, I'm just a guy here on YouTube. Let's hope Joshua is curious about what Mayweather, George Foreman, I would definitely call Foreman, no question about it, right? And what Lennox Lewis have to say about this. Right? I think he needs time off. I understand there's big money for a rematch. I get it. Right? What Joshua has to ask himself is whether or not he just wants to go for the money while it's there. Right? I don't think that's this guy. Because if that was the case, he would have signed to fight Deontay Wilder. Right? If Joshua is a different guy, if he's a guy who understands, few people hit like him in the entire sport. Right? He came close to stopping Andy. When Andy gets off the canvas, right, Joshua does land a pretty good right hand. But Andy rolls with it, comes right back into the pocket where Joshua is defenseless. Right? That right hand, maybe an inch over to the side, might have ended the fight. Right? If I'm Joshua and I want a long career, then I take time off right here. The fans will understand. Right? If you've ever been in a car crash, the last place you want to be the next day is in your car. This was a car crash for the young man. Right? Not only that, just looking at the scene in the ring after the fight, right? His father getting upset with Eddie Hearn and stuff like that. I can tell there were a lot of moving pieces. Right? There's some tension with the whole scene around Joshua. 
that's even more of a reason to spend some time with the family, dampen it a little bit. Don't be in a rush to get a new trainer, right? Think it through. Bring in advisors. Understand, Tyson Fury had his trainer with him for the Deontay Wilder fight. He also had Freddie Roach in his corner, right? Bring in a second set of eyes. Talk to people. Get a poll of some people you trust on what you did wrong in this fight. Ask yourself why you weren't better prepared for Andy Ruiz, who did what Andy always does. Collapse the pocket. Fast hands. Two-handed attack. Combinations. Right? Why was Joshua surprised by that? Repeatedly surprised by that. So, my advice to Joshua is the same as George Foreman's advice. I noticed in the boxing press here online they're saying Joshua has agreed to an immediate rematch. Player, rethink that. What's going to be different in a few months? Let me tell you too. I'm sure he's looking around at his entourage and he's noticed that right now the mood's changed in the room. Right? Everybody loves a winner. You lose that first time, somehow the mood changes. Right? What I want him to envision is what happens if this fight repeats itself on British soil, which is a distinct possibility. Right? Joshua doesn't have Andy Ruiz's combination punching skills. Andy's a different personality type altogether. Right? How many guys try to walk down Anthony Joshua? That's what Ruiz is trying to do from the opening bell. Right? Why fight Andy again at all? Aren't there a lot of titles out there? Right? Think it through. Deontay Wilder has said he's still willing to fight you. Deontay has to fight Luis Ortiz first. Right? If that fight goes well, and if Tyson Fury's fight goes well, then those two guys are going to fight each other. That gives you several months of cover, doesn't it? Also, there are other guys out there who are safer choices, quite frankly, than a rematch with Andy Ruiz. You've already fought Dylan White, haven't you? You've already stopped Dylan White, haven't you? Dylan White's been saying some uncomplimentary things, hasn't he? Right, folks, that's a big box office fight right there with less uncertainty than fighting Andy Ruiz. Dylan White's not going to throw caution to the wind, collapse the pocket, suddenly become a combination puncher, throwing a very high percentage of power shots. Dylan White's not going to enter the ring knowing and I know Dylan White knocked you down in the amateurs, but he's not going to enter the ring knowing that he dropped you four times in a championship fight on short notice in a venue you chose. <laughs> and he's going to have that level of confidence. Let sleeping dogs lie. <clears throat> Realize that your defensive skills need work. Right? Take an honest look at your past. You beat Vladimir Klitschko, but we're at risk in that fight. Right? Klitschko drops you. A lot of people watching that fight feel that Klitschko let you off the hook. Think it through, too. You sparred with Klitschko. Klitschko's very complimentary of Anthony Joshua. Right? But it's clear. And Klitschko had another former heavyweight champion in his corner. What I want people to do is revisit that fight. It's clear the Klitschko brothers thought the fight was over. That Joshua had too many muscles and was going to tire later in the fight. Let me say too, the Andy Ruiz fight's interesting. Ruiz drops him twice in the third round comes out for the fourth round, isn't in a rush. 
This wasn't a, hey, the window's open, I've got to blow it open and get this title. No, no, no. Andy felt that he was the better boxer. Just read his interviews. He felt it was a matter of time, that there was no need to rush. I want AJ to think about the Joseph Parker fight. The referee, sore spot for me, would not let the guys fight inside. Don't believe me? Just look at the film of the fight. Right? I want AJ, forget the judges scoring, I want AJ to revisit the first few rounds of his fight against Alexander Povetkin. Was he able to match Povetkin's hand speed? Wasn't Povetkin able to land shots when he jumped inside, especially at the end of the first round? Right? So, a difficult sport like boxing is completely humbling. Right? If I'm AJ, right now is not the time to let ego get the best of me. Right? Fans still love you. Fans still want to see you fight. There are a lot of big fights out there that don't involve this level of hand speed from an opponent. A lot of fights where the opponent doesn't have a history of dropping you four times. Right? If I were AJ, I would quietly tell Eddie Hearn, Eddie, I'm not going to exercise this immediate rematch clause. Let's work out a different deal. I still want to be with the zone. I still want to fight on the platform. But fighting this guy again on short notice when George Foreman thinks I need a new manager and Lennox Lewis thinks I need a new trainer and Floyd thinks I need better defense isn't might not be the best idea let me retool let me emotionally get it together let me interview trainers see who I work with let me take some time off from the sport at least a year right so I know what I did wrong in this fight I know the styles that I could beat I know my strengths I know my weaknesses etc Josh was good friends with Vladimir Klitschko right why not contact him have it be a frank private conversation another Olympic gold medalist right who like Foreman like Lewis, lost his share of matches. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Right? I understand there are differences of opinion out there. Go ahead and tell us yours in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.